I am at the point in Ezekiel Kralin's ongoing story of the two little dogs that he loves, and so he uh, he puts up with the depredations and uh, vilifications of uh, a crackhead named Deke. I don't think I understand the difference between a crackhead and a meth head, but I guess it doesn't matter, and I'm told that it doesn't matter all that much for purposes of the story. Um, Deke is... Uh, the owner of the dogs now and is taking care of them and he's homeless and Zeke isn't allowed to have the dogs in his apartment anymore and so he's torn and loves it when the dogs show up and tries to be nice to them but he never knows what Deke is going to do or say and he's got to keep helping Deke out by charging up his various devices which now include a, a like a hundred pound um Bluetooth speaker that he has to lug up the stairs to plug in. And I would have given up on Deke a long time ago. The hell with it. But uh, he's made of sterner stuff, I suppose. Anyway, The Bipolar Winds Do Blow was the title of this segment of the story. Ezekiel Kralin wrote, Email correspondence, January 11th to the 14th. Re, two dogs are okay for emergency shelter, according to this article. Date, January 11th. Watson wrote, It's a realish word. I heard it in a comedic context, somebody spoofing military honors. Yeah, we're going to give you a brass figlagy and a bronze oak leaf cluster. I replied, love it, thanks. I'm keeping it in my tales then, including your explanation, so readers may enjoy the malapropism. I got that word by looking up the question, what do you call a word intentionally mispronounced for humor, which spat out this article entitled, believe it or not, Mispronunciation. Subject, Rudy's Whole Wheat Muffins Suck, date January 12th, the morning. What are the morose feelings that may haunt me in my morning resurrection right out of the ballpark? Delightfully crunchy toasted umami yeast tang thrills the tongue, satisfies my English muffin cravings like aura wheat never could, huzzah. Re Rudy's Whole Wheat Muffins Suck, date January 12th, afternoon. Watson wrote, had me going for a second there. I replied, the muffin devil made me do it. Watson wrote, I'm eating my surprisingly adequate Safeway muffin now with butter and honey and a cup of black tea. I replied, tahini and honey is also good, which is how I'm having my second muffin in a moment. Anyway, Deke and Pups are back, and it's sunny and dry today. They're relaxing out front right now. See pictures. I asked if he still has his campsite with tent and sleeping bags. He just sat there nodding his head, about to drift off to sleep, mumbled, I don't know. He has few possessions with him now, not even a shopping cart, just the JBL monster smartphone and that large blue drop cloth Flacco was lying down on like the Queen of Sheba. Lucky's on the right, where I laid down cardboard and another new sleeping bag for the handsome lad. Some hissy fit disruption when he showed up, but nothing to write home about. He left me with the pups for about a half hour, so I fed and watered them, enjoying their company till their master returned. Neck scritches, belly rubs, and affectionate reverie all around. Another storm coming up tonight, and all the way into Sunday. Heavy rains and thunder, Friday and Saturday, then the worst is over, I hope. I can't afford any more sleeping bags. He needs to recycle the ones I gave him, but I don't see it happening. Re Rudy's Whole Wheat Muffin Suck, date January 12th, afternoon. Watson wrote, that's a prize-winning photo. Content, angle, composition, color. I replied, thank you. But as I've said before, this is destiny. The pros, the photos, the videos, the audio pieces create themselves unbidden, some of which have just been sitting there for years in a dusty corner waiting to appear on stage in my Brindlekin saga, like an old illustration from the 19th century or a voice from early television. Others that come to me unbidden are either recent or appear right before me at the moment, such as an image from a search engine, a post from the MCN discussion list, a spontaneous remark from a stranger that lights up my tales, and so forth. This is why my stories are so astounding, for I am merely the recording secretary, and inspiration is my pen. And Marshall's narration of passages from these tales becomes part of the story itself, expanding upon it. In other words, my creation is self-aware and will someday change many lives for the better. 
drawing them into my opus as new and welcome characters. You and Marshall, along with some others, are the vanguards. My story becomes everyone's story over the long, long run. My tales are a multimedia feast as time passes and my books get published. My WordPress site will remain the only place to enjoy the full impact, along with other sites that serve to replicate it. Rough edges and all. By the way, this chapter in progress I have already entitled The Muffin Chapter, for obvious reasons. Sometimes the simple things in life, such as the crunchy delight of a morning repast, become far more important than big things, like the war in Ukraine, a global pandemic, etc. In fact, they may even liberate humanity and heal the planet. It all comes down to perspective and maybe the marvelous humor and cleverness of kismet. Watson wrote, I can see that Deke is a handsome fellow. I replied, good thing he's so obnoxious or I might be tempted. Nah, not really. I only have eyes for the demi and miracles. They fill my heart with more joy than I ever dreamed of. Subject. EMTs showed up in my building again last night, date January 13th. I heard the ambulance come howling at Market Street and wondered if it was going to stop here. Sure enough, it did, and I assumed it was another emergency call from my bohemian trash neighbor, Carlson, but when I stepped out my door a few minutes later, I heard voices from the floor above instead of around the corner, asking the usual medical questions to whoever was the patient. I'm guessing it was our building manager, Kevin who maybe collapsed in the hallway above or leaned against the wall to keep from falling or something like that, because I'm sure it was his voice answering their queries as an EMT instructed the patient to sit down and not move. Or perhaps he was a helpful bystander and the patient could not speak at the moment. Of course, I didn't pry by walking upstairs to take a gander or standing around on my floor to watch whomever being spirited away. Deke and Pups were camped outside for the evening, so I came downstairs to check on them as an excuse to witness who would be exiting the front gate on that gurney presently parked in the lobby, unoccupied. Who's that for? queried Deke, pointing at the ambulance the moment I stepped out. The building manager, I replied. Told you it wasn't long for this world. It couldn't be, he exclaimed. I just saw him leave the building across the street a few minutes ago. Isn't he the old man who walks with a stoop and never talks to anyone? I was amused by Deke's apt description, but figured his sense of time and place may be awry, considering what prolonged meth use does to a person since the hounds were fast asleep and tucked in their sleeping bags. I did not want to rouse them, and since Deke was preoccupied in conversing with another vagrant, I only waited five minutes before returning hovel, Though the gurney remained vacant, and I walked up the stairs unobstructed. Though just before stepping inside, I told Deke, I have only one sleeping bag left, so return this one before you leave and bring back any that get wet so I can dry them, as I can't afford to buy any more for the rest of the month. His response, Watson, all capital letters here, I don't want to hear it. A little while later, I heard voices outside my door, so I opened to crack only to see no one pass by. Oh, they're exiting the building right now, I concluded, and quickly went to the window and looked out. Someone was definitely being rolled out on the gurney, but from my angle and the darkness of night, I could not make out the face before he was gently lifted into the ambulance. I didn't bother to run downstairs and ask Deke if he saw who it was, because I doubt from his seated position fifteen feet away that would be possible. It's now the next day, and I have yet to find out who that person was. Rush to the ER, but I'm pretty sure it's Kevin. And if so, no doubt there'll be a notice to that effect in the lobby in a day or two, or I'll hear about it one way or another, or I'll just cross paths with Kevin himself, if it wasn't him, in which case I hope he doesn't see the disappointment on my face. As for last night's meet-up with Deke, it was pleasantly uneventful. He did call me down to watch the quadrupeds for twenty minutes or so while he rushed off to Safeway. My raggedy trio departed around 10 p.m., and I wished them a warm, dry, and safe night, crouching down to give the mutts a hug goodbye. Flacco stood on her hind legs to kiss me on the face, while the, her brother Flacco, while her brother squeezed himself through the narrow space between my calves. In a re uh, is Flacco a female name? I thought that was a male name. I don't know why I didn't notice that before and say something about it. Squeezed himself through the narrow space between my calves in a repetitious little circle while emoting groans of endearment 
Once they took off, I cleaned up what scant debris remained in their little spot out front. They have not returned today. Yet, maybe they won't. He kept the sleeping bag, by the way. Subject. Some dogs eating, then the rain returns. January 14th, afternoon. Deke dropped by around 2 p.m., asked me to watch the pups for a half hour, maybe as long as an hour. After I lugged the speaker upstairs, I said, fine. And he was gone in a flash, leaving me to feed the angels and set up a comfy nest. See attached pictures. Dogs ain't wearing the new sweaters I gave them yesterday. The idiot wastes my money like a vacuum cleaner on an open wallet. But worse than that, he neglects the quadrupeds. He returned just 40 minutes later with a large cup of iced coffee. Here, put some sugar in it. I don't use sugar, Deke, I replied. I have honey, but stirring it up will take a while, because it's an iced drink. Okay, just do it, he replied. When I returned downstairs, I asked him, They didn't have any sugar where you bought it? They do, but I didn't have the time, was his dumb excuse. Time for what? To stir it? Yeah, something like that. Unbelievable. So he's now camped outside, waiting for his speaker to reach full charge, and it started to rain almost an hour ago. See video. Caption. My unhoused friend Deke and his two little doggies are safely beneath the tarp atop two large sheets of cardboard and a sleeping blanket. I hope they don't wind up getting soaked before they return to their tent wherever it is, if it's still standing. I don't know where he got that huge drop cloth, but I'm glad he did. Though I imagine the cardboard sheets are soaked up like a sponge by now, which I had originally covered with that tarp, if only I had used a few trash bags instead. The rain didn't last long, it's already stopped, and I hope he departs before the next deluge. Our entire meet-up so far has been amicable, nonetheless not an angry chirp out of the Cajun fuck-up, and while I was sitting the pups, a gentleman who parked nearby called me over to hand me a Jackson. I said, thanks so much. I'm not homeless myself, but my friend is who owns these dogs, and I help out, but guess what, Watson? He's never going to see that 20, because he keeps wasting my money over sweaters and sleeping bags, so I'll use that bill to purchase another bag for now on any cash some kind... Sorry, for now on, probably he meant. Any cash that some kind person offers me while I'm watching the mutts will never reach Deke's grubby hands. So the JBL Party Box 300 is now blinking on the fifth and final row of lights, which means it'll be fully charged within the hour. Subject. He left in peace, but came back hollering a half hour later. Date, January 14th, evening. The sleeping bag was sopping wet, so I took that upstairs to hang dry. Told him I'd come back down with a dry one, the last I had still in its plastic wrapper, but I forgot to bring it back down. And in his hurry to pack up and leave, he didn't ask where it is, but wished me a good night and took off toward Castro Street. I was very pleased with this meet-up, as he was patient and friendly all the way through, in spite of him sitting out the downpour. When I went back hovel to replace the soggy newspaper I'd already laid down, I saw that new sleeping bag on my cot and realized then I forgot about it. So I quickly donned my jacket, grabbed the bag, and rushed up Market Street, hoping to find them, and I did. They were crossing the intersection, where I had several seconds to dash across before the light would change. Deke! Deke, I called to him so he'd stop and turn around, then handed him the bag. Glad I found you. He smiled and said, you didn't need to do that. Ah, but I wanted to, I replied, then marched on back home. But barely a half hour later, I hear his angry hollers right outside, as I'm sure did everyone else on this side of the building. So I looked out the window. He glared up at me and demanded I get down there now. As I descended the stairs, I heard him yell, What's taking you so long? To be continued.